So, so you didn't really dive into 128 at all? No. Alright, so, that, so that's fine. This is what we're going to dive in today. Then. So in your books, go ahead and open to page 57. Uh, we're still going to keep your homework. No, we're not. I lied. Uh, no. You did 37 to 41 already, yes? Yeah. Yes. Because I thought we would have actually gotten to... Let's keep the closure problems. In the... So keeping this as your homework will just make it so that there's going to be a night where we don't have homework. So that's good. We're like ahead on the homework. Team. These problems marked with CL are always wrap-up problems. They're closure. So closure I have here. You probably can't really read it. What's closure mean? So closure is the satisfactory conclusion to a product or service relationship. Each party feeling satisfied with the completed transaction, it being a fair just conclusion without negative consequence. That's what we're looking for in our closure sections is a nice satisfaction feel from getting everything wrapped up. So as we work through the closure problems, one thing that you'll notice, the answers are in the book. What? Uh, it's up there too. Always up there too. So if you flip, because we should have our book out in front of us, if you flip to page 68, now, don't look at page 68, really. Just look at the very top and then look away. Very top and look away. It says answers for closure. So, it tells you, here, look at the answers for 142, I guess. We're on page 68. If you're not, look up somebody else's. I'm on page 68. Notice it says, here's the solution. Here, if you need help, you could look in lesson 1.1.4. And then it says, you want more problems like this one? Go check out problems 36 and 83. So, it gives you each of the different problem types we encounter this chapter in the closure section. Then it gives you more opportunities for practice. Cool? So, that's our homework tonight, 42 through 50. Please check your answers. As you complete the question, either like do the question, then check it, or do them all, then check them all. But please check your answers. So as your groups, let's go ahead, and I again just want to have you guys work on your own as much as possible. Let's try to do 130 through 132. Um, and obviously you can keep moving on if you need to, but then we kind of change topics. Let's try to do 30 through 32 in about the next 10 to 15 minutes. What's up? So our lesson today is actually on page 57. And then tonight's homework isn't until page 64. Nope. 63. So it's all sequential. Okay, why? Okay, so everybody open your textbook. No option, everybody open your textbook. We, we got to relearn how to use textbooks because you guys have been without them for so long. Okay, so I don't use page numbers because that's too easy. The world out there isn't going to say, open the page 62 and read them. No, everything is sequential. They've written this textbook in a very good manner, very intentionally. So, when reading through the textbook, we're always moving forward. So we today are going to be in section 128, which sequentially follows what we did on Friday, 1 through 7. If you are ever lost, just look at the question numbers. If I'm flipping through the book and I see question 98 and tonight's homework, or the lesson work that we're doing, I am talking about question, what did I just say? I said, start working on question 130, and I'm looking at question 98. I know I need to flip forward. So all the questions are all sequential throughout all of chapter 1. I do not say one dash, because that's redundant, repetitive, and unimportant. We know we're in chapter 1. So I just say question 130. When I say for homework, it's CL whatever. The CL doesn't matter. It's still sequential. So question 136, I know my homework is 42. I need to keep going. There's 41. I need to keep going. There's 42. 
So I'm not going to spit you page numbers because you guys can figure this out on your own. This textbook is written very, very well. If you are still confused, please stick up a hand. I will be around to help you. We should all be on question 130 and 128. With Eustace, which every time I see it, I think it says Estus. But it is Eustace. He's adding fractions. Any questions? All right, I will walk around. If you need help, please ask me. As you start taking notes, please label everything. So today is the 11th. We already talked about your toolkit, right? Yeah. And we should be taking notes in your toolkit? Yeah. So you still have space. Um, or maybe. You should still have space in the chapter 2 learning log pages, like chapters 13, 14, 15 in your toolkit. You should have space on these graph page pages. Maybe, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the first or, chapter, chapter 1. Sorry. Yeah. Log. Sorry, I was planning this weekend, and we, in my head, we are in chapter two. Like, in my head, this class, is, we're ready, we're moving on. So, sorry, you should have pages at the front of this, like pages three, four, five. That's that every time I read it. That's this is that. Think about two minutes to try to wrap up 130, then we're going to bring that back together because it's kind of a quicker problem. Try to go quickly. Wash your hands. What? So the question is, is this the right answer? Does this actually equal? No. What we're just saying. Okay. So, explain your reasoning why you vomit. What should the answer be? I would just draw a picture. 
I mean, if it was me, I would just draw a picture. Well, yeah, it, it would just be the question of does his answer make sense? But by make sense, it's also meaning like is mathematically sound, like works, is correct. Like so, even though you know what he did and it makes sense to you, he is not making sense of the problem because he got the wrong answer. Bless you. All right, let's wrap up 130 together. So I've already written a couple yeah. things up here. In your notes, really, you could just have 130. You could write down 1 half plus 2 fourths equals 3 six, and you could slash through the equals. You could write no or, or whatever. Uh, Estes is wrong, or useless clerk meaning. You might as well say Estes. Why? I drew some, some pictures up here, or somebody was talking about coconuts or something. I don't know, but I drew a picture up here. What do you think? Oh, you can't just add to the denominator, you can make that up. Mmm. Yeah, you have to make So, our, what do we want to call it? So instead of just saying denominator, what's that really, what are we using it for here? What? what? Yeah, so our parts aren't the same size. Sorry, that goes a little sloppy. Parts aren't the same size, so I can't add them. So when he's talking about a half, okay, so I have like a half, and I have my life, I think, in pieces. And then two fourths. Oh, that half one is going to stink. Again, I think in pieces. Wait a minute. So what should he be getting? One whole. Because this is a half, and that's a half. There's no way it equals a half. Right. So go ahead and move on to 131. It, it goes to the smart file. So now it's here. Try to have this one wrapped in five minutes. Less than, really. So think about probability. Right, or right, well, whatever. So think about I like these colors, I don't like those colors. I'm fine if I pull orange or green. I don't want yellow or purple. So I could get orange and be happy, or get green and be happy. Either works. 
So you're not using percent now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm using it because why? Yeah. All right, I've got to shuffle up. What? Shuffle up. Oh. Izzy is not here. Feel better, Izzy, if you watch the video. Annie. Digging your is that actual Hannah or are you just doing that to yourself? Oh no, it's actual Hannah. That's sweet. I'm digging it. Um, I was watching a documentary over the weekend. Somebody got Helvetica tattooed right here because it's like the favorite font or something. I thought that was really weird. It just says Helvetica. All right, so can you talk to me about 131a about the probability of or? Like, what'd you get? Then talk us through how you got there. Okay, I got. You got 14, 15, so now that's awkward because I don't, you have a three-fifths and a one-third, and hmm, weird, okay, how? So, I changed the denominator to 15 by multiplying three-fifths by three, and... Three. Now you multiplied it by th just like three? Yeah. You see, you didn't multiply by three, what'd you actually multiply by? So you multiplied by 3 on top and bottom, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So you multiplied by 3 here and 3 there, so this value is really 1. one. It's Monday. I'm trying to remind you of things. Remember, that's our giant 1. So be careful, because if you were writing this out on a test and you said, I'm going to space up here, and you said, I multiplied by 3, that's not true. We multiplied by 3 over 3, which is really 1. But I agree with what you did. So we get 9 fifteenths there. Working number I can't write off my screen. And then we take your 1 third. What would you multiply by there? Uh, 5 fifths. Yeah, 5 fifths, which gave me 5 fifteenths. Then I put these values together. Aha! You have to have portion sizes that are equal. So whether you, it's like, it's hard to think about because when we talk about probability versus portion size, always think about like a pizza or like a spinner or something like that. The slices have to be equal sizes. Thirds and fifths are not. So then B goes on to say, are there other colors in the bag? Alana, what do you think? Yes. Or flavors, more so. The kiwi and the coconut take up two thirds. They do. Oh, so be careful. They are two flavors out of how many we don't know. Now, be careful saying two thirds though, because that sounds like a probability. We just calculated their probability is fourteen fifteenths. So, if we say there are 15 candies in the bag. How many candies are we missing? 
one. So then there could be a third flavor. But I heard the back table talking about this. If we say there's 30 flavors in the bag, or not flavors, 30 candies, how many pieces would be missing? Two. Two, which could be two different flavors. So be careful. But this says three flavors. So we know three flavors. Just be careful with things like that because I, the back table was talking about, well, there could be 30 candies. Well, there could be 45 or 60 or 75 or 90 or... Your bag could multiply forever. So there has to be, because we're missing 1 15th or 2 30ths or whatever. So, of course, yes, there has to be. However you wrote that. And then C, you really have infinitely many possibilities. There could be 15 or any multiple of that value. So you could actually say it could have 15x or 15m or something like any multiple of 15. Any questions on the candy side? I want to challenge you guys and see if we can deal with Lyle's challenge problem in three minutes. Have at it. This is my challenge. Oh, we can just draw this. Yeah, combine it and then we can.
Well, not, uh, but if you're halfway right, right? Okay, you're halfway wrong. Yeah. Or what's the truth? And if you're halfway wrong, then. Yeah. These geeks are not the same as you can see. Anybody. If it's gone for a while, we'll launch an investigation. But there's a couple turns like that in the direction. Anybody, if I were to take Mar uh, Myra's suggestion, what do I need to multiply two thirds by to get a common denominator? Anybody? Seven sevens and what? Okay, green. Green sometimes doesn't like to work. And what about two sevenths? Anybody? Three thirds. I did not like mean to get you guys all quiet, but since you did, okay. Mina. So we we followed uh, Myra just just because I was asking people questions. Uh, Kennessy disagrees and says you want to set up a subtraction problem. Do you agree with Kennessy or do you move on to Darren? Um, I think we should do a subtraction board, but not with those numbers because Ooh. it's a number that we want. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay. so you want to do subtraction board. Ooh, so okay. So 14 21st, 6 21st. If I subtract those, I get 8 21st. What does that give me then? What do I use the 8 21st for? That's the probability of blue. Probability of blue. Now, how are you sure about that? Because 1421 is the red and the blue combined, and 621 is just the red. So if you subtract it, it's just the blue. So the red or blue was our two thirds, the either. Right, so that's like getting the orange or green Skittles. I'll eat either. I'll take either. It's fine. Don't care. Probability of just red is 2 7, so of course less. And we subtract it away, we get 8 21st, which you say is the probability of blue. Now, Darren says, whoa, whoa, guys, we know what they add up to. We know one of the factors or one of the pieces of the addition. I'm going to set up this. Anybody have anything to say to Darren? Yeah. Um, I've kind of thought about this out. Um, like, because two times is pretty close, it wouldn't really work. Mm. But if you were to kind of mix the all the ideas together, this strategy would actually work. But you would have to first convert, like what Mayra said. Myra. That. So it hold, hold on. Um, in a normal class session, I, I got to get better at getting back to this. So I'm getting used to having a textbook too. Somebody earlier told me I was moving too fast, and I didn't realize like I still am moving too fast for some people. So especially if my speakers are coming out and you hear that little picture thing, it throws it up onto the smart board file that I keep. So if we're doing something down here and I want to move on. The notes will toss up there, and then I can move this page, and you can keep writing notes if you need. So you said, Darren, since he's not converted, we're looking at a problem that is two sevens plus some amount, and I don't know either of them, will equal two out of three. So I go from seven pieces to three pieces? No. Like, no. We well, probably do some, um, like, you flip the but, but hold on. So that's why Zin said this doesn't work. Without converting, now this is true. He has written a true statement. It just doesn't work right now. It just isn't easily solvable right yeah. now. And so if you were to find a common denominator like you did, um, and make the two sevens fourteen over twenty. Ooh, so if I made that four fourteenths, or no, sorry, what did we multiply by three? So we made it six twenty firsts right. plus something. Which would then equal the fourteen over twenty one. So now um also using um the other method, which is the subtraction, we can figure out okay, we well if we know fourteen twenty um twenty one is the answer. 
answer of lead plus three, then you just have to subtract six from 14 and get 18. Yep. So still this way, I'm going to get the same 8 21sts. But no matter what, what needs to be step one? Two mm -hmm. steps. Um, yeah. Myra. So always, it's okay, they, they try to get like really interesting names in here, so it's not just like all Joe and Mike. Because um, those are just common names, right? Micah, uh, I'm like an adaptation on a fairly common name. Um, always get your pieces to match. Always get your denominators taken care of first, then follow the process. So I think we pretty much discussed out all of the questions that they asked. So let's move on to 33, 34, and 35. I want to see if we can bust these out in about six minutes. So try to get through all three of these in about six minutes. Feel free to like jot a quick one of these in your book, in your toolkit where you're taking notes. Not yeah, is you don't get better. Hey, I forget if we've said it in this class or not. When we're trying to find those matching denominators, what do we call that? Actually, we're looking for the... Well, yeah, but when we're looking at both numbers as they ratchet up, we're looking for the least common multiple. So we are looking for really, jot this somewhere, we're looking for the least common multiple for your denominator. That's really the process that we're taking right now. We're looking for the LCM or the least common multiple for your denominator. LCM I don't mind this, but I hate this coming out. Okay. One third, one third. That's also why you have a multiplication table right now. Memorization is for chunks. So reference this. I, I will never really ask you to memorize things. Chunk. Um, I need to find something. Like, Somebody who does what they don't need to do, or somebody who doesn't need to do Like, if you were watching a football game, right to your hands, and you as a receiver totally miss it, I might call you a chump because, like, your one job was to catch the ball. It was right there. For the sake of memorization, so my history class when I was in school was here for 45 minutes. I'm going to write notes on the board. You write notes on the paper. You memorize them. Learning is different than memorization. So if you learn those and you understand multiplication, it's great. One. So if all you do is memorize them just for the sake of memory, that's not good. Okay. So we have them all together and then just. Learning. Wait, wait, wait. 60, 60 minus all of them. Yes. 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 So, if you, if I say something this week, and you can just spit it back to me a week later, that's not learning. If you explain to me how to use it to solve a problem, that's learning. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it's a very high level argument. That's like a Mr. S's
Zach's calling today, isn't he? Yeah. Naya, what is the least common multiple of 3, 5, and 6? 30. Anyone disagree? No. I agree. So my one-thirds becomes anybody? Ten thirtieths. My one-sixth? Five thirtieths. My two fifths? Twelve thirtieths. And if you do not know how we got those values, please check with somebody at your team. And the missing probability there then? About? Three thirtieths, which can then reduce to one. Keep working. I'll bring back together in about a minute for 134 and 8. What's your uh, common denominator? Oh, no, just, no, yeah, least. Three, four, and eight. Eight. What's your uh, common denominator? No, just, no, yeah, least. Yeah, we do. Uh, ignore me if you choose, but one fourth going to the denominator of twenty four becomes six twenty fourths. So both of these do. One third? Eight twenty fourths. One eighth? Three twenty fourths. How many are we missing? Yeah. One twenty four. No reduction there. Take two minutes to try to make a spinner like this. Then trade it off to somebody in 135 where it says make a spinner missing a section. Take two minutes to try to make one, then trade it off. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're good. But, I mean, if you're done, if you're caught up, if you're ready, that's your next objective. All right, so I know some people are still getting notes down, so I'm going to chat with you really quickly because then I'm just going to let you guys have the last couple minutes to work and then we'll get out of here. Here's my plan for the week. We're done with chapter one. Like, this is the last section of chapter one. There's a closure section, which is going to be planned for tomorrow. Um, fortunately, I actually made my plan for doing one through eight today, um, even though I thought we were going to be on that. So Wednesday would be a team test, literally as like with your learning teams. Then I'd get you your feedback and everything back by Thursday. And Thursday we'll start chapter two. And then Friday we would take your individual test and you would not have any homework for the weekend. So I would likely be collecting um, your math journal, potentially probably your math toolkit with your assessment on Friday. Because if you don't have homework, you don't have new notes to take, whatever, I can take it all home, have the weekend, get it all graded, um, all that sort of stuff. So, because I respect you guys, I don't have grave opposition to that. Like, you know something on the calendar I don't know about, or, like, if there was a giant assessment in another class on Friday, I would avoid that out of respect for you if you guys asked me to. So is there anything going on this week that that plan sounds bad? Team test Wednesday, individual test Friday. Uh, closure, the closure section. So working through it together. So here's what tomorrow is going to look like. If you have these closure problems done for homework tonight, so that we won't trade spinners. We'll just um, chat real quick and then I'll get you guys out of here. So look at page 63. 
Your objective for tomorrow, especially so you don't annoy your group, is to have questions 42 through 50 completed. At the start of class, I'm just going to ask you guys to check with each other. If your answers line up, great. If they don't, try to figure out why. Then we'll check as a whole group. We'll take any last questions from chapter 1. And then we might just go ahead and start chapter 2 tomorrow. 2 one, one. There won't be any like chapter 2 homework assigned or anything like that. So I want to give you guys time to wrap up chapter 1. We might just go ahead and start it tomorrow. So please try to have questions 42 through 50 completed so you can talk about them with your team tomorrow and we can take any questions. Cool. Sweet. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. We'll go ahead and get you out to your next class. Yo. Okay.